I came out of Kingston University where I did a course on music recording and music technology actually with someone called David Gibbons, who you probably do know as well. He went off to work at Soundtracks and I went off to try and be a freelance engineer. And out of the blue one day, he rung me up and said, uh, we've got the perfect job for you. Uh, come and show people how this mixing console works and you can, you can maybe educate them on what we're trying to do with Soundtracks. Todd, who then ran the company, basically said, right, you've got four weeks. You've got to learn every single product we manufacture and I'm going to be back in four weeks with, uh, with the sales director and David and we're going to pick three, you're going to have to demo them. And uh, obviously bluffed it quite well because I'm still here, aren't I? John is uniquely special. He's crazy, he's a genius, he's humble, he's friendly and he's a great friend. John is an amazing individual that actually last year when he got his Parnelli Award, it was, uh, I think the whole company was like, yeah, well done, John, because he's a total loon. He knows what he's good at and he loves it. He's still still excited with new technology and it's it's great. The R&D team's obviously grown quite a lot now. We're part of Audiotonics and, uh, and he thrives in it. When John's on a mission, he lights the room with his excitement. So he's, he's quite a force to be reckoned with. In late January, my father passed away, which was a bit of a, uh, he, was, he was, if you like, my inspiration. Um, as I grew up, he worked for EMI, so I spent a lot of time going into music studios as a young boy. And, uh, and I think he's probably responsible for a lot of who I am today. So it was, started as a very tough year for me. Uh, and then in May, obviously, we jumped off a very high cliff and started Digico by buying out uh, soundtracks from the PLC and breaking it. And, and really, we were a startup. I mean, it was a very small number of people, not much money in the bank account. We had a, a finite amount of time to, to build a brand and get, get sales, but it was exciting. 2007, the existing investors had, had all done well and, uh, and they wanted to make, make their money back, which is you know, totally fair enough. Uh, but us as a management team, we, we wanted to go further. We, we had this vision of going further. John and his team had this idea to move off of DSP and move to an FPGA, which was pretty ambitious. Uh, and we decided the best way to, to carry that forward was to, to look for a private equity partner. And we were very fortunate, we, we could evaluate several partners and we narrowed it down to a, a company called Mobius who genuinely believed in, in our vision for the company and, and actually thought that you know, the, the guys could get the technology to work. When we signed the deal, when we did the MBO, the FPGA technology was close to working but wasn't working. Clang's interesting because for me it reminds me very much of Digico in the early days. It's a very small team of bright people that have a cool product uh, and are really passionate about the industry they work in and they just want to get it out there. Obviously, you know, Clang is designed as a personal monitoring system or more importantly as a, an immersive in-ear mixing system for touring engineers and, and they've got something quite special. On average, engineers are being asked to turn the mixes down, about 6 dB, which is a huge amount when you, you imagine you're wearing in-ears, which is a very in, intensive way of listening to, to audio. Uh, and it makes it more natural and more, more normal, which ultimately makes musicians play better. Probably there are a few moments where I wish I'd fought harder for something I knew was right than I actually did. And I think my dad always told me, if you don't think it's right, you should, you should stand up and be counted. You shouldn't just sit there as a, a wallflower, was his saying. Uh, and I think probably there's a couple of times where I wish, as I look back, I wish I'd fought harder for something I knew was right. But, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? But it's, it's turned out all right. Obviously the early days of D5 will always be special. You know, we, we were out there at the front end, but you know, a few years ago, I was fortunate enough to go and see uh, Joe Hurley at U2 in Dublin. And I got to watch that gig, uh, the Joshua Tree Tour. But likewise, you know, I don't know, a year ago, Alan and Heath launched the SQ range, which is an amazing product. You know, when I look at what that, that mixing console does and, and how it looks and feels, uh, and for the price point, it's phenomenal. You know, more recently, we've had SSL with Six and Fusion. You know, their first new EQs for 25 years on a on a product. Amazing to be part to be part of that. 
Digico's moved into install with Foria, which was an amazing launch that you know our customer base you know really embraced, and you know it's being installed everywhere. Calrec, you know what a transition in, in a company. You know, they've got their AOIP solution out now. They've got their new Impulse Core, which is just off the charts in terms of the amount of processing and flexibility it's going to be able to offer. And and you know we 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 started with Calrec. They had 11 distributors. Now I think they're 40 something distributors around the world. And uh, yeah, there, there are a lot there are lots of things. So. I'm very proud of what we've achieved as a, as a small startup out of the UK. Where shall we begin? If it's cold and wintry, I'll have a pint of Guinness, please. If it's a normal day, I'll have a lager. If it's really sunny, I'll have a cider. If we're having dinner, I'll have some red wine. If you want to see my dangerous side, probably Jack and Coke, which I think has been ordered now. My go-to at the bar would be a vodka tonic with a twist of lime. Uh, and uh, seeing as this interview is about to finish, I'll have an espresso martini, thank you.